Imagine what life would be like if you couldn't move at all. Imagine you were paralysed from the neck down and needed help to do even the simplest things like feeding yourself, reading a book or just breathing. And now imagine the doctors tell you that there's no hope. You're going to be paralysed for the rest of your life. Ten years ago, Gemma was an active, healthy child. Her parents had planned a weekend away and on a Saturday morning, the young family set out. Suddenly, the car was involved in a horrific accident. In one split second, Gemma's life was destroyed. She was just seven. First, you don't really realise what's happened. A few months later, when you, you're ready to deal with it, it, it hit you that your life's changed and it's changed forever. Every day in the UK, two people are left paralysed after a serious accident. That's over 700 people a year. Most accidents happen on the road, and the average age when injury strikes is just 19. In every way, Gemma is like any other girl her age. She loves music, fashion and football. But unlike most others, she can only move her head and needs constant assistance. It's the small things that were once taken for granted. Likes of brushing your hair, feeding yourself, answering the phone. It's all these things that you never really appreciated at the time when you had them. The biggest problem I, I deal with day in and day out is probably not me with the disability. It's how other people perceive me with the disability. It's their attitudes and them not. It's the fear of the unknown to them. See, I'm fine. I, 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 um, I live with the disability and it, it doesn't faze me to an extent, though. Obviously, sometimes it, it becomes frustrating, but the main thing is people understanding that I am just the same as anyone walking down the street, only I, I can't physically do that. That's, that's my aim now, is to try, and over, to try and make people see me for a person, not for a disability. That's, that's the hardest thing for me now. I'm growing older and things are changing. Despite years of intensive research, modern medicine hasn't yet found a way to repair the central nervous system, and a small injury to the spine has devastating consequences. But there is one UK charity that's working ceaselessly to change this and bring new hope to people with paralysing spinal injuries. Spinal research was set up in 1980 by a young man, Stuart Yesner, who'd had a car accident and broken his neck. And like a lot of people, when they go to a spinal unit, he was told that there was nothing that they could do for him. So he thought, well, this isn't quite right. Something needs to happen. So he set up the trust with one single aim, and that was to find a cure for spinal cord injury. Scientists have been working for years to try and understand how to repair the spinal cord, an incredibly difficult task. Very significant recent breakthroughs, though, have enabled scientists to regenerate about four centimetres of spine in rats. The challenge now is to transfer these treatments to human patients, a very difficult and expensive process. Four centimetres of regeneration is not enough to completely repair a spinal cord, but there are many patients who would benefit enormously from this amount of regeneration. For instance, Christopher Reeve can't breathe for himself, he's on a ventilator, and four centimetres of regeneration would allow him to breathe without the ventilator. Many patients have arms that will work, but hands that won't, and four centimetres of regeneration would bring back their hand function. So although it's not a complete repair, four centimetres would be of enormous benefit. Now, four centimetres of spine may not sound like much, but the improvement it would make to someone's life is immeasurable. Think about what it would mean to Gemma if she got back the use of her hands. Giving someone a hug, physically hugging someone, I've lost that now forever and, and they're the things that you miss and they're the things that are the most painful at times to, to let go. Because you've got the memory but you can't, you can never do it again. So if you had the, the use of one limb which would regain any of them small day-to-day -day things that you took for granted. It was obviously, it would change my life again.
Sports like rugby, horse riding or skiing can also be extremely dangerous. Penny Roberts broke her neck in a sports accident 11 years ago. She's lucky to be alive, but can only move her head, shoulders and arms. She's not able to use her hands. It was just like going to bed one night and waking up in a different body. It's like somebody stopping your life and saying, OK, you've got to live this one now, and you can't get back to your old life, no matter how much you want to. Put your hairband on? Yeah. You just, just brush it a bit more under there. It's really thick there, and I think it's still wet. Penny now has a three-year-old son, oh. Peter. There are things that I would love to do for him that I've never been able to do, like change his nappy, feed him, um, dress him, undress him. It would be lovely to just be able to pick him up or to wrestle with him now he's getting older. Penny has arms that work and hands that don't. And if we could do four centimetres of regeneration for Penny, it would bring back her hand function. And someone with hands that work can live a completely independent life by themselves, whereas someone with hands that don't work has to live with two or three carers looking after them all the time. You'll never stop spinal cord injury happening, but we can end the permanence of paralysis if we help the research now. Even if I could maybe get back to using my arms, that would give me so much more independence and such better quality of life. Just that what, even if it was one arm or even a hand. A devastating spinal injury could so easily happen to any of us at any time. It could happen to you or someone you love. The Spinal Research Trust is giving hope to so many other people like Gemma and Penny. We've shown you how research can improve the quality of their lives, but the charity receives no government funding and relies solely on your donations to keep going. The problem is that whenever you do this kind of work, moving out of the laboratory into the clinic, it's very, very expensive. So the Trust is now 100% focused on raising enough money to get clinical trials up and running so that we can actually start to improve the quality of life of paralysed people. Spinal research to me is, well, it's hope. It's hope for the future. And it's not just hope for myself. It's hope for everyone else with the same disability. I feel it's a good cause. And it keeps me going day in, day out. Mm.